Following the phone hacking scandal at the News of the World and amid a media environment of gossip, opinion, attack and partisanship, does the concept of public interest even now exist? The media have no morals, is our Intelligence Squared debate now on BBC World News, chaired by Dr Simon Longstaff from the Sydney Opera House. Good evening from the Festival of Dangerous Ideas at the Sydney Opera House, where we've got a, a stellar panel of speakers and commentators this evening for this Intelligence Squared debate on the topic that the media have no morals. The more we scratch the surface of contemporary media practices, the more there seems to be a, a ground for alarm. There's been phone hacking, there's been the confusion of opinion for news, a confusion of what is in the public interest with what the public happens to be interested in. And yet, despite all those things, here we are today actually having a debate about the morality of the media being covered by the media. Today, arguing for the motion, we have Stephen Mayne, an award-winning journalist, Mona el Tahawi, who most recently has been bringing a refreshing and challenging view of events in the Middle East and the Arab Spring. And Senator Bob Brown, parliamentary leader of the Australian Greens, which currently hold the balance of power in the Australian Parliament. Please welcome him. <laughs> Against the motion, Kate Aidy, formerly the BBC's chief news correspondent, Hamish MacDonald, an outstanding young journalist who's produced news in Australia and overseas, most notably for Al Jazeera, and Julian Burnside QC, a noted lawyer and one of Australia's most influential public intellectuals. Please welcome them. <laughs> well, now it's time for the speakers to make their opening speeches. Speaking for the motion is Stephen Mayne, an award-winning reporter and former media advisor the former Premier of Victoria, Jeff Kennett. He's the founder of Crikey.com and still a contributor on that site and the publisher of TheMainReport.com. Please welcome Stephen Mayne. But I'd like to change the topic today. Rather than having the media have no morals, I think it maybe should be the Murdoch Empire has no morals. <laughs> Because let's face it, Australia is a murdocracy. I mean, <laughs> Sir Keith Murdoch started off as the Malvern reporter for the age in 1903. And he spent 49 years building the Herald and Weekly Times. He died in October 1952, and he handed over a sleepy afternoon paper to his son, Rupert, who took charge aged 23 in January 1953. Since then, Rupert has turned that inheritance, worth about $9 million in today's dollars, into the largest and most powerful media empire in the world. There is no doubt in my mind that the Murdoch family is the most powerful individual family in the world, a creation that came out of Camberwell in Melbourne. And us Australians need to be responsible for the fact that Rupert Murdoch has handpicked every New York mayor since Ed Koch in 1976, that he's handpicked governments, that he's started wars, that he's decided who will be the President of the United States. And if you consider the dominance that he has in the Australian market, it does say why this debate should be about the Murdoch press. Seventy per cent of our newspapers are with the Murdochs. Now, I used to work for the Murdochs, did about eight years for them, and I've seen it up front how the Murdoch Tabloids Act, and I personally think they do lack a moral compass in terms of the way they behave. And if you try and be a critic of them, as I turned after leaving them, well then, I got assaulted on national television when one of their journalists stormed the stage at the Walkleys in 2006 and pushed me off. And I thought, drunken live television attack? Surely Rupert would sack that guy, but no. 
No moral concerns with journalists behaving like that. I mean, for 40 years, Rupert's been debasing British society with those page three girls. He's debased any idea of ethical journalism with phone hacking. And he's debased any notion of balanced journalism with Fox News. <laughs> then you've got nepotism, where he's just paid $330 million to his daughter, greed with his $33 million salary. And at the end of the day, Rupert has a habit of rewarding, promoting, and employing rogues and bullies. And then you've got the Iraq War, of course, where uh, Rupert has rewarded every failed leader of the Iraq War. So Jose Maria Aznar, the Spanish president, put on the News Corp board. Tony Blair made godfather to his daughter. John Howard, a generous advance to write his memoirs, ne negotiated directly with, with Rupert. And I say, anyone who is still dangerously in charge of a company at the age of 80 after 58 years in charge, and with his record, and with his dominance in Australia, it just says that with Rupert in charge, the media in Australia have no morals. Thank you. Long time, long time BBC News correspondent, became one of the best known faces on British television. As a female war correspondent, please welcome Kate Aidy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think that the media have no morals, then I contend that you, if you vote for that, have no morals either. Now, what are my arguments? Well, they're rooted in the years I have spent as a reporter. It is a fact, and I could not deny it, that I have arrived at certain situations, often with people who have been very extreme circumstances or in difficulties or in tragedy, and I have been greeted by the words, not how wonderful that you have arrived, but hello, Mrs. Vulture. In other instances, I have put what I thought were pertinent questions, and I've not questioned too much, but I have been met with, you are scum. So I am aware that there are areas of the media where there are problems. There will always be reporters who have perhaps not been entirely the best they could be in the job. I am a realist, but what I am certain of is that you cannot do this job properly, you cannot do it with vigor, energy, and a faith in what you do and justify it to yourself, never mind to others at the end of the day, if you do not have a set of principles and ethics. You have to be a moral person. There are some things you don't do. You keep things being private. You are careful about how far you go. You do an invade, don't invade people's personal lives too much. You do not expose the vulnerable. You do not question those who are incapable. There are many, many things which are small, tiny moral dilemmas on a daily basis, whether you are a reporter for some local newspaper in the tiniest of places or someone doing international news stuck in a war zone. You are careful. You are careful. You have a moral code. But it's not a debate which is grounded in ever more sleazier journalists, reporters and editors. It is about those right at the very top who are getting very rich, where profit is all. That's all they care about. Corruption trickles down from above. Illegal payments, criminal activity, no sense of propriety in what is right. Those who are earning a crust are often coerced. They are often driven to be part of this. And the problem lies right at the top. But I don't think that you belong to the people who would say that all of the media are corrupt. You have discrimination. You're smart. You know that when there is a machine like the media, it is not the machine that has a morality. It's those who run a machine. That is the important point. And if they cannot distinguish between right and wrong, if they cannot hold to any principle and be honest to the public, then the machine they run rots, and that is often the problem. But you can discriminate, and that is where it is important that you do not vote in favor of this motion, because you would have to be a sleazebag if you read all that is about in the media and watched it, and you thought it immoral. What are you doing watching it? Sleaze bags. You're not like that. 
You know what is right. You know that if the driver has gone wrong with the machine, that the machine is not at fault. We should do something about the drivers. Those that pursue profit for no principle. Those only interested in money who do not care about people's little lives. That is what we should do. We're in a democracy. You know where the fault lies. You can see it. We need the media. We need, need the media for so many good things that it brings. In the wide range of subjects and interests, the things that are wrong with the world that can be put right. So you, in your sense, are going, I am certain, to vote against this motion. <laughs> A multi-award winning columnist and public speaker on Muslim and Arab issues, well published internationally, would you please welcome Mona El Tahari. Thank you Simon. Hello everyone. I was born in Egypt and I began my journalism career in Egypt. And state controlled media in Egypt for decades has turned people's lives into misery. And we saw this clearly during the January 25th revolution in Egypt at a time when between 15 million to 20 million Egyptians were rising up against Hosni Mubarak. State-controlled media were feeding people lies. So bad were the lies that many people were walking out of jobs that they held for years. Now we could wonder why they chose to work for state-controlled media when they knew all along that it was immoral. But that's something for them to explain, not for me to explain today. I'm glad they walked out. But state-controlled state media is an easy target. And it's very easy for everybody here to sit there and say, well, yeah, state-controlled media, bad, very bad. So let's move to something that prides itself on a bit more independence and which really shook up the state-controlled media scene in the Middle East, and that's Al Jazeera. The morality of Al Jazeera depends on where you stand. And by that, I mean ask an Iraqi. After the United States invaded Iraq, Al Jazeera's coverage, depending on where you stood, was either moral or completely immoral. If you were an Iraqi Shia and you were slaughtered as you went on pilgrimage, you were not called a martyr on Al Jazeera in the same way that Iraqi Sunni Muslims were. This is Al Jazeera Arabic. I have to make a distinction between Al Jazeera Arabic and English because when you watch Al Jazeera English, it's the height of professionalism. It gives the BBC a run for its money. It covers stories that most major media out outlets completely ignore. And it recently aired a wonderful documentary on the undercovered revolution in Bahrain. Now, if Al Jazeera Arabic had also aired this revolution called Shouting in the Dark, I probably wouldn't have much of a case here before you. But Al Jazeera Arabic would never show that documentary because Al Jazeera Arabic lacks the morality to recognize that while it's right to cover the Egyptian revolution 24 hours a day, it had its television cameras on in Tahrir Square around the clock, and I salute it for that. Somehow the Bahraini revolution did not garner such attention. And when asked about this, the former director general of Al Jazeera said, we had to make a decision on how important various revolutions were to the region. If you pass into those words what he's actually saying, and what Al Jazeera Arabic and English in their distinction are actually saying, is that some people's freedom and dignity is more important than others. Because when it comes to Al Jazeera, it falls into this Bermuda Triangle of logic. Qatar is home to the US largest American airbase in the Middle East. Qatar also hosts an Israeli trade office, even though the two countries do not have diplomatic relations. And Qatar considers Israel an enemy state. There's no peace between the two countries. But Qatar is also home to this groundbreaking news channel called Al Jazeera. And I guarantee most of the time on Al Jazeera, Arabic especially, None of those things are disclosed. Now, if I take it to the United States and Fox News, Fox News also eats its own because during the coverage of the so-called terrorist mosque in the US last year, Fox News analysts were saying, follow the money, follow the money to this terrorist mosque. What they weren't telling you is that the same Saudi who was funding, partly funding this mosque in New York, close to ground zero, is also the second largest shareholder in Fox News. Just as Al Jazeera decides who is more worthy of the title martyr, Fox News also decides who is more worthy of who is our friend and who isn't. So I urge you today to recognize that the media have very few morals left 
And for us in the Middle East and North Africa, fighting for revolutions to succeed, when we're looking for a media model, we know that it's not going to be the kind of model you have here or in the US or that the state imposed on us. We need a new mo model altogether because the immorality of most media today is unacceptable. Thank you. He began his working life as a political reporter in Canberra, later as a news presenter for Al Jazeera, as you've heard. And in 2008, he was awarded the honour of being chosen in London as Young Journalist of the Year. Please welcome Hamish MacDonald. Hi, everyone. I feel like I've got quite a lot to defend. I work for Murdoch. I used to work for Al Jazeera, so uh, I really feel as though I'm under attack. Hi, Mum. Hi, Rupert. <laughs> to say that the entire media has no morals is completely incorrect, and that's what we're arguing today. I'd like to just pick up on, on some of the comments that have been made. You know, this debate is about whether the media as a whole is with or without morals. Uh, I noticed that Stephen very uh, slowly uh, <laughs> tightened and tightened the description of what the media actually is. It became very quickly the Murdoch Empire, then the Murdoch tabloid, tabloids, then Rupert Murdoch himself. And that's not what we're here to debate today. It's whether or not the media as a whole has morals. And I guess the, the best evidence of the fact that we do have morals is the fact that you know about these things that go wrong. You know about what the news of the world did. It wasn't the politicians that stood up and took on the news of the world. It wasn't the police. It wasn't business leaders. It was journalists. It was the Guardian newspaper that pursued this story doggedly, year after year after year. It was not the people in positions of power. It was journalists that were there saying this is wrong and taking a moral line. As I said, I'm coming to this debate from, I think, a fairly unique perspective. I'm the only person here that's employed by a Murdoch of the Lachlan variety, I might point out. Uh, and previously, I worked for Al Jazeera, that other shining example of immoral media. I joined Al Jazeera before it was trendy. Back then, <laughs> back then, Donald Rumsfeld referred to us as Terror TV. They accused us of broadcasting beheadings. My father said to me, do you know where Bin Laden is? <laughs> Another relative asked me if I had to convert. <clears throat> At that time, the world thought that Al Jazeera was immoral. That was the consensus. At that time, there was a whole set of preconceptions about what Al Jazeera was, what it meant. And at no time in the five and a half years that I worked there was I ever asked to pursue a particular angle, pursue a particular line of questioning, or say a particular thing. And I found actually this year, working for the 10 Network, owned in part by Lachlan Murdoch, uh, that it's been exactly the same. The day after I signed my contract, Lachlan Murdoch, James Packer, and then a couple of weeks later, Gina Reinhart bought into the company. And quickly, the press began to, to beat our doors down, saying that this was part of some giant right-wing conspiracy to turn the, the 10 network into an Australian version of Fox News. What I want to put to you today is that it is too easy and too simplistic to draw those conclusions. The facts just don't stack up. We dedicated weeks of coverage to the news of the world scandal. It is hardly a giant right-wing conspiracy. What I want to say to you finally is that we believe in transparency and that is the proof that we have morals. We invite you every night to tweet us, tell us exactly what you think. We know there are bad, bad examples but it is up to you to vote with your feet. Don't watch these dreadful television programs, don't buy these terrible newspapers, do the right thing. You need to have morals so that we in the media with morals can win. Thank you. He's one of Australia's most respected politicians, renowned for his support for environmental issues, human rights issues, Senator Bob Brown.